What is up amigos? Today we're looking at rear window angle aerodynamics and this ties into number one and two in this video series on automotive aerodynamics. So if you haven't watched those videos, go check them out then come back to this video and things will be a lot clearer. In this video we'll be going through a much more detailed view of the aerodynamics when the rear window of a car changes. We'll be going through something called the critical angle. We'll be looking at the difference between fast backs and square backs and also the profile drag versus vortex drag. So first of all, let's describe what the rear window angle is. Let's say we have the rear part of the car. So this is the roof here. And then we have the rear window here. So that's the rear window here. And we have a projection of this line and we have the angle between the roof and this rear window, the projection of this roof. That's the angle we're talking about. Now there's something called the alpha critical or the critical angle or the critical angle here. Let's discuss this. Now this angle is a very important one because it determines, well, it, it's based on when the aerodynamics changes dramatically. So let's say we have two different car windows here. We have the first one, which we will call a fastback. And this angle we'll say is 20 degrees. We then have another one, which is significantly greater. And technically this is still a fastback, but it's moving more towards something called a square back. And we'll say this one is 40 degrees. Now, the flow physics that occurs for these two different setups is very different. Let's discuss them. Let's project this. So let's say we are looking at the back of the car here. What we will see on this uh, car compared to this car, the flow physics is significantly different. First of all, in this one, we'll see vortices rolling up on each side. And one thing that's important is the sign of these vortices, which we'll get into in a second. For this window, we won't see any vortices. In fact, we'll see a slightly different situation. We might see some minor vortices rotating this way and this way, but they'll be very weak compared to these vortices here. And that's very important. So what happens between these two angles is that these vortices that form, which are called longitudinal vortices on this fast back, they pop. And this often happens at around about 30 degrees. And this is what alpha critical is. At around this angle of attack, so if this is 30 degrees, we'll start to have these vortices popping and we'll go to, to this kind of setup here. We'll have vortices that will be rotating in the opposite sign and they'll be significantly weaker. And if we were to plot the drag of the car against this angle, so we have alpha, I'm not gonna put critical here, I'm just gonna put alpha here, and the drag coefficient here, we'll see that as we increase the angle of attack up to the critical angle attack, let's say, it will start to increase and then it will just drop dramatically and then start to taper off. In fact, I should have drawn these two more similar in terms of lines, but it depends on the car. This one might be higher than here, might be lower than here, or maybe the same sort of level. What's important is this drop here. And the reason why we get a drop here is because these vortices pop. So as we increase the angle of attack, we have these vortices getting stronger and stronger with this, this roof. As you get to a certain point, the 30 degree approximately, this is where these vortices pop and then we get a new type of flow physics occurring. And this demarcation is the difference between a fast back and a square back. This is the difference in the flow physics. So if square back will have these two weaker vortices compared to these much stronger vortices which operate in the opposite sign. Now in terms of what's happening here, we have something very interesting happening. So these vortices, they are actually um, manipulating the flow a lot in a few different ways. They are, first of all, trying to like induce the flow, which if you look at other videos on our Aero Fundamental series, you'll understand what I mean by that. And also they have different pressures. So a vortex is usually a low pressure core. If you have a low pressure around anywhere, that's going to heavily induce the flow to get sucked to here. So let's say we have low pressure here, you're going to, you're going to be attracting flow from all around into this region here because you have low pressure there. If you have these vortices here, which are even lower pressure because they, sh they are stronger, then you're going to be attracting even more flow from around. This is an important note because this changes how much the flow will separate over the back. Now for the fast back, it gets a little bit more complicated. We actually often get separation around here and behind here around the back of the trunk. And they can sometimes join. And if you look at podcasts one and two, you'll know what I'm talking about here. But let's not talk about this at the moment because that's a little bit complex. Let's just talk about these vortices. So we can go a little bit further in our analysis and talk about the profile drag versus the vortex drag. 
So let's say we have a, another graph and it's showing the, pretty much the same thing. We have alpha here and we have the drag, but it's either the pressure, sorry, the profile drag or the vortex drag. What is the difference? Well, let's start for the vortex drag first because that makes a lot of sense. It's, it's very intuitive. Vortex drag is the drag that we get from vortices, from these vortices that are, that are forming. Profile drag is the drag we get from skin friction drag and pressure. So let's say we have a back window here and we have low pressure here. We have high pressure up here at the front. Then the difference between the front and back is obviously a net negative pressure. So then we're going to be getting a resistive force on this object. That's pressure drag. So profile drag is, vort is um, skin friction drag plus pressure drag together. Whereas vortex drag is just the drag from these vortices. Now, one interesting question is, if you have these very strong vortices or even these weak vortices, the drag that's coming in this region, you would you expect most of the drag to be from the vortices? So there should be vortex drag. I would think so, because if you have very strong vortices somewhere and the drag that is produced by vortices is called vortex drag, then you should probably get very high vortex drag. But that's not actually the case. And this is where things get quite interesting. So we actually get a much higher profile drag. Let's say we have the critical flow here and we get this solid line is the profile drag. It will start to increase and it will drop and then we'll get this part here. This dash line is the vortex drag. We'll still get it increasing and it will drop and then it will plateau out as well. The vortex drag is significantly lower than the pressure drag, than the profile drag, I should mention, sorry. Now, the reason why is because of the effects that these vortices are having on the car. They're not just inducing the flow, but they're resulting in low pressure regions as well around the back of the car, which I mentioned earlier. So if we increase, if we drop the pressure a lot on the back face, that will then increase the profile drag through the pressure drag increase. So even though we have these vortices present and they are increasing the vortex drag, so they are increasing the drag through vortices, they are also increasing the drag through the profile drag. And the profile drag is far greater than the vortex drag. It's around about a three to one ratio. So pressure, profile drag is like three times more than the vortex drag. And then afterwards, when we get these vortices popping, we still have a significant drag, both in the profile vortex and total drag. And that's just due to these other vortices forming on the opposite side through the square back form, uh, geometry. So that's the rear window angle aerodynamics in a nutshell. I tried to simplify it for you as much as possible. And if you want to learn more about this, then you can like look at different studies on that. You can check out a book called uh, Automotive Aerodynamics by Joseph Katz. We have that linked in the description below. And I'll just go quickly go through this again, just to recap. So the rear window angle aerodynamics is quite interesting. Changing this angle between the roof and the window dramatically changes the aerodynamics of the car. And let's say we have an angle attack of about, sorry, an angle of about 10 degrees. That's below something called the critical angle. And this critical angle is the demarcation between when we have a difference in flow physics. This difference occurs with um, the popping of these vortices. If we have the angle attack less than 30 degrees, let's say, we will get very strong vortices, one on each side of the car forming. And as we increase the angle attack up to about 30 degrees, these vortices will get stronger and stronger. Once we get to 30 degrees, they'll pop. And this is a general angle attack. It might be 50 degrees, or maybe 35 degrees, 25 degrees, but around 30 degrees. And then once we get past 30 degrees, we will then start to get these other vortices forming of opposite sides and much weaker. And they are pretty decent at keeping the floor attached um, to some extent, but we also get a drag associated with these as well. And that can be due to the flow still separating if they are not um, good enough to keep the floor attached. Now, in terms of the drag that these vortices create, we not only have the drag from the actual vortices themselves, but the drag that these vortices create indirectly. So we have the pressure drag on the back and we might get a bit of skin friction drag increase if the, the uh, flow around it is induced to be faster. So the total drag will actually increase because of these vortices and then it will reduce once these very strong vortices are popped. But that's also a function of the profile drag and the vortex drag, not just the vortex drag. That's a very important thing to remember. So that's in this video. If you liked it, make sure to like it. If you want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe. And if you want to also check out these other, other videos that we have, and if you want to learn more about this as well, we have courses in link in the description. And I'll see you next video. Peace out, amigos.